Pastor Chooks Obina Ogoye. Pastor Chooks is the lead pastor of Resurrection Life Church in Johannesburg. He is a passionate teacher and preacher of the Word of God and has been blessed by God with the uncanny ability and gift to explain and unpack deep and complex spiritual truths in very easy to understand and apply formats. Pastor Chooks has been involved and active in marketplace ministries. He's an entrepreneur and business consultant with an avid passion for raising other entrepreneurs and business leaders. He has taught and facilitated many leadership and entrepreneurship courses and seminars. He is the host of broadcast programs on Facebook, YouTube, and several podcast channels. Living the life with Pastor Chooks, the amazing power of woman. Thank God it's Friday. Good evening. Welcome to another edition of our Bible study, our time to engage with the Word of God in our online masterclass, Understanding the Goodness of God. Tonight, we are on episode 188, 188. and today is the third installment and the, the thought, the goodness of God makes me dare the impossible. The goodness of God made me dare, makes me dare the impossible. Today is part three. And I want to encourage you, um, if you, if you missed out on part one and missed out on part two, please go watch them or listen to them on our uh, YouTube channel or any of our um, podcast channels. You know, they're there. Spotify and so on, they're there. You, you, you would be very blessed because what I'm doing today, I'm building on uh, the things that I've already, you know, stated over the last two days in the teachings. All right. So tonight... Let's go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. There's a story there. I'm going to read 10 verses of scriptures from Mark 5 verse 24 going all the way to 34. Mark 5, 24. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse i need you to pay attention to that but rather grew worse when she heard about jesus she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment for she said if only i may touch his clothes i shall be made well and immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction and jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him turned around in the crowd and said who touched my clothes but his disciples said to him you see the multitude thronging you and you say who touched me and he looked around to see her who had done this thing but the woman fearing and trembling knowing what had happened to her came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. All right. This is uh, a very popular story um, that uh, anybody who's been you know, around church, you know, you would have heard the story of this woman who had suffered for 12 solid years of continuous bleeding. It, this, this was not the normal period of a woman. This was now a disease that, you know, for 12 years she's been bleeding. There are a number of things that I want to bring out in this story as we talk about daring the impossible. Now, this woman dared the impossible. What made her healing impossible? What made her healing impossible? Number one, according to the law of Moses, the law of the times where she lived, the law of the times where she lived made it impossible for her to come out in public, for her to touch people. Let, let me show you something. I, I, Leviticus chapter 15, verse 25. Leviticus 15, verse 25. I, I want to show you something so that you understand the, the constraints upon her mind that she had to defy in order to get her healing. Uh, the impossibilities that she had to ignore, as it were, overwrite, 
in order to get her healing. There, there's a lot of lesson from this woman. Um, Leviticus chapter number 15, I'm reading at 25, verse 25. Listen, listen to this. Numbers, um, sorry, Leviticus 15, 25. Leviticus 15, 25. If a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, other than at, at the time of her customary impurity, or if it runs beyond her usual time of impurity, all the days of her unclean discharge shall be as the days of her customary um, impurity. She shall be unclean. Verse 26, every bed on which she lies, all the days of her discharge shall be to her as the bed of her um, impurity. Whatever she sits on shall be unclean as the uncleanness of her impurity. 27, whoever touches those things shall be unclean. He shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. So did you see? So these are the things that she had lived with for the last 12 years. And her situation was not getting better. In fact, the Bible said it was getting worse. And then she heard about Jesus. She, I don't know, you know, all the many stories that they told her about Jesus, but I'm sure one of the things that they told her was that Jesus was a miracle worker. That Jesus makes impossible things possible. She heard that Jesus grants impossible requests. Now, this is very important. And when she heard that, she locked her mind on that fact or on that truth that Jesus makes impossible things possible. So, when she locked her mind on the power of God to turn impossibility to possible, she obviously considered all the impossibilities that she was facing. Now, one of the impossibilities that she was facing is that for 12 years, she had been bleeding continuously. For 12 years, she had sought doctors. For 12 years, it, she had spent all her money on her livelihood, and she didn't get better. So, so this is a situation where everything around her says you are in an impossible situation. I mean, if you've been looking for an answer for 12 years, you've gone from one doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor, and none of them is helping you. In fact, to make matters worse, she was growing worse. Her situation was growing worse. So it's not better. And now there are the social and socio-religious uh, uh, limitations that she had to deal with. The religion of her time, the customs of her time did not allow her to come out in public, did not allow her to touch anybody. Anybody she touched, the person became unclean, whatever and whoever. It wasn't just things. It wasn't just human beings, but things. Whatever she touched became unclean. Whoever she touched became unclean. And now, Jesus is not in an isolated place. Jesus is in a crowd. Jesus is in a public place with so many multitudes thronging around Jesus. So, so, so that's another level of impossibility. Can you see all the challenges that, you know, if she sat down, if she was an analytical person, and she sat down analyzing all the negativities and all the hurdles that are being between her and what she desired, she was totally in an impossible situation. But something about this woman that we're going to learn from today, she refused to reckon with all of those impossibilities. She refused to reckon with all of those negativities. She refused to reckon with the social, religious constraints on her that did not allow her to come out in a public place. Because what it means is that if she believed in it, if she reckoned with it, meaning that every single person she touched was going to have to bath, was going to have to become unclean and have to bath and then wait the whole day for, for, her, for that, um, that the imposition of uncleanness to expire. So she was going to make like a whole community unclean. I mean, imagine if she considered all that negativity, all that hurdles. For many of us in 2022, 
God needs you to overlook all the hurdles. Uh, all the hurdles, all the mountains looking at you, telling you that you cannot have one, two, three, four, five. That you cannot do one, two, three, four, five. Listen, it may have been in positions from last year. It may have been in positions from 10 years ago, 20 years ago. But what God is saying to us in this season, overlook them. Do not pay them any mind. They challenged you and stopped you last year. But I want you to know, this year they are not going to challenge you and they are not going to stop you. Oh yeah, you didn't hear what I said. Let me say it again. They stopped you in the years before now. This year, they are not going to stop you and they are not going to challenge you. In other words, you will choose not to consider them to be obstacles. You will choose not to consider them to be limitations. You will choose not to consider them to be uh, impediments in your way. It's all about what you choose to focus on. I talked about that last, last night. What you choose to focus on. She refused to focus on these things and acknowledge them as obstacles. They were real obstacles, but she chose not to see them as such. All she focused on, she said to herself, if only I can touch the end of his clothes, if only I can touch his clothes, I shall be made well. That's all she focused on. In other words, she focused on, I shall be made well. She locked her mind on, I am going to be made well. <laughs> this is when you are believing for impossible. you got to lock your mind on the outcome that you are looking for god is going to grant me this request i'm going to multiply my money i'm going to grow in my career i'm going to get that promotion i'm going to have that baby i'm going to have oh yes i'm going to get married you got to focus on what you want and that is what you are pressing to get an answer from god the, now, when you allow yourself to be held down by the limitations, to be held down by the negativity, to be held down by all the excuses and all the things that the enemy... Listen, you've got to focus. Uh, my destiny helpers are coming. I don't know what the devil used to turn them back in the previous years. I don't know how the devil made them sour or made them unavailable or made them unwilling to help me. That is in 2021 that is in 2020 that is in 2019 this is 2022 god has opened the door in the red sea <laughs> god has opened the way for me my destiny helpers are coming i refuse to acknowledge obstacles i refuse to allow the devil to show me what is not going to work or what is not going to help me or what is not going to allow them to come through for me this is this woman's pos position i am not going to allow all of these things that held me back in previous years now i believe if i touch the hem of his garment i shall be made well i can imagine a thought saying but you're going to make people unclean as you go he, she said to that thought, shut up. <laughs> she said to that sh thought, shut up. Yeah, you are going to make Jesus unclean if you touch him. She said to that thought, shut up. Shut up. And all the things, listen, everything will try to be shouting at you and try to tell you that it's not going to work. You got to tell them, shut up. You got to tell them, shut up. Your eyes and your focus must be on the Lord. And can I tell you something? For her to actually go all the way into the crowd to touch the hem of Jesus' garment and believe that she will be healed, she presumed on the goodness of God. She presumed on the goodness of God. She presumed that God will grant her that, that God was so magnanimous towards her. And she put her faith in the goodness of God. That's why I'm sharing with you that the goodness of God will make you dead impossible. If you put your faith in the goodness of God, put your faith in the goodness of God, put your faith in the goodness of God, that you will see the goodness of God in your body. You may have carried a sickness in your body for, for weeks, for months, for years. I don't know what it is. But you got to put your faith in the goodness of God. This is what happened here. When you put your faith in the goodness of God, you are going to see it. <laughs> Let me say it again. When you put your faith in the goodness of God, you are going to see a manifestation of the goodness of God. In other words, faith in the goodness of God will make you 
despise the, the, the impossibilities, the difficulties, the challenges, overlook them, focus on the goodness of God, and you're going to see it. You know, you have that symptom in your body that keeps on telling you, yeah, 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 you still have the condition. You still, that's a lie. Can I tell you something? That's a lie. Why? Because the Bible says by the stripes of Jesus you've been healed. That symptom is lying. And you will not pay attention to lying vanities. The problem is when you pay attention to the difficulty, you establish the difficulty. When you pay attention to the barrier, you establish the barrier. Listen, listen, what I'm telling you is the truth. When you pay attention to the obstacle, you establish the obstacle. What I just said is a scientific truth. Yes. Even quantum physicists tell us that matter, nothing is anything. It's when you pay attention to it, you collapse it and make it something. This is why this woman chose not to pay attention to all the obstacles. Listen, they told, I mean, the situation get, got worse, meaning that the bleeding, the flow got heavier. The flow got heavier. Before it was a small flow. Now, over, you know, it, was, it got heavier. Do you know that she did not put her mind in the fact that it was getting worse? Why? If she put her mind in the fact that she was getting worse, it would get worse. It would get worse. Stop! Putting your mind on the things that tells, that says no to you. The things that, that make you afraid. Stop paying attention to them. Focus your mind on the goodness of God. Stand with me and, and declare that, that scripture in Psalm 27 verse 13. I have believed that I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I have believed it. I believe that I will see the goodness of God in my career. I will see the goodness of God in my marriage. I will see the goodness of God in my health. I will see the goodness of God with my child, with my children. With, you know, whatever it is that you are believing, I will see the goodness of God as I conceive and have that baby. I will see the goodness of God as I walk down the aisle to the love of my life to say, I do, I do, I do. Hallelujah. 2022, that impossibility is becoming a possibility. I am just teaching you the principles from God's word, how you are going to bear that impossibility, how you are going to have that miracle, that testimony, that testimony you have not had in, in the years before. 2022 is a year of unending celebrations in the name of Jesus. And this is how you're going to do it. Lock your mind on the goodness of God, not on the, all the negative things, not on all the things that stand in the way. Yes, you have tried before to get financing for your business and money did not come. You have gotten, you know, some deals and, and to, to try to execute them, they fell flat and, you know, they despised uh, your idea. They stood against you. They, you know, listen, listen. You are not going to pay any of those negativities attention. You're not going to focus on them. You're going to focus on the goodness of God. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In 2022, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In 2022, I will see. That's all that your mind locks in on. So this woman, and, 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 and I noticed, she pressed through. <laughs> she pressed past. Do you know that the biggest obstacles, this hear me, the biggest obstacles that this woman had to jump, the biggest hoops that she had to jump, were not the ones on the outside. They were the ones on the inside. They were the ones on the high inside. Those, those, you know, things that, that, that say you can't touch people. You can't go out. You are weak. 12 years of bleeding will have left her physically weak. Those were obstacles in her mind. Those were the, the impossibilities that were in her mind. The, 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 you know, but she refused. She refused to pay attention to them. What obstacles are you empowering with your focus? What obstacles are you empowering with your focus? Maybe you try to knock on a door and the door collapsed or the door shut in your face. Now the devil wants to tell you that all doors are locked. <laughs> the devil is a liar. All doors are open in 2022. Hallelujah. Maybe, maybe you, 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 you had a destiny helper and their, their, their mission in your life got aborted or Satan corrupted it. And now, the devil is telling you you have nobody to help you. That's a lie. That is a big lie. There is God to help you. A, you know, a man 
that was sick at the, at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years had come to believe that lie because everybody she, he tried to help him, carry him when the, the angel turns the water. They didn't help him. So over 38 years, he came to believe a lie. I have no man to help me. I have no man to help me. For some people, this is what the devil is using to keep you in impossibility. To keep you, I have nobody to help me. I have nobody to help me. Because the people that came before, uh, the devil corrupted their minds or something happened and they were not able to help you. They refused to help you. They rejected you. They backed down. They, you know, they withdrew their effort. They withdrew their support. I don't know what they did. Now the devil tells you that, you know, you don't have anybody to help you. And that's an impossibility in your mind. And you're sitting with this, this negativity sitting on you. And you are not able to step out with your dream because you believe nobody's going to help you. You believe the land is not suitable to your idea. That devil is a liar. You, you put adverts. It didn't work. You, you didn't make sales. The devil is a liar. You're not going to take that nonsense in 2022. I am telling you, God is granting impossible requests. You need to ignore. Ignore the things that didn't work before. Lock in on the truth that the goodness of God makes the impossible possible for you. This is what that woman had to overcome. She presumed on the goodness of God. And guess what? It did not fail her. <laughs> it did not fail her. She got her miracle. Do you know that she even got her miracle without Jesus' approval? <laughs> she, she got a miracle. It, it, you know, Jesus did not know it, 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 that she was sneaking behind, her, behind him. And she pulled that miracle and she got it. Ah, what, a, what, a, what a woman. She got that miracle because she made up her mind none of these negativities none of these obstacles will stand in my way let me say to you your greatest obstacles are not the ones out there your greatest obstacles are in your mind is how the devil is representing the challenges are, that are around you but i want you to know this with god nothing is impossible with god nothing is impossible that's where we started two days ago uh, you know uh, uh, three days ago actually when we started this series with god nothing is impossible so so don't let your mind accept don't let your mind accept that these things are impossibilities no they are not they are not god will overrule it isn't it interesting that when this woman got her healing from jesus when she got her healing from jesus that nobody started saying, you know, ah, but you touched me when you were unclean. So we have all become unclean. The Bible does not have a record of that. And you know why the Bible does not have a record of that? Because it did not happen. Why did it not happen? Because she did not pay mind to it. Ah. Many of the obstacles that we are facing is the ones we created ourselves by the way we focus on it. You are the one who is saying, I don't have helpers. I don't want anybody. I don't have anybody to finance me. I don't have anybody to help me. You are the one saying it. And you are the one creating the obstacle. Stop saying that. The goodness of God is on your case. The goodness of God is on your side. That's all you need to see. That's all you need to see. The goodness of God is on my side. Stop paying attention to the negativities. Stop paying attention and, and acknowledging them and reinforcing them inside of your head. And then you are not making, taking, take, you know, taking the steps. The Bible says that the slothful man says there's a lion in the street. So he stays in the house. He doesn't step out. So, so, so the, the imagination of the lion has become a problem. The, she, he says there's a lion in the street. And that's why he's not going out. He sees all the problems. He sees all the difficulties in his head. There might not have even been any lion on the street. But he says there's a lion on the street. So he sits in the house with a picture of a lion and sits there and not step out to pursue his dream. That will not be you in 2022. You, will go, you are going to step out. If there was a lion on the street, listen to me. If there is ever a lion on the street, by the time you are trying to open your door, the lion will move over to another street. Hallelujah. The lion will move over to another street. The path will be made straight for you. I see God making a way in the wilderness. I see God making a way in the Red Sea for you. If there was ever a lion on the street, in 2022, when you knock on your door to open your door and you hold the door handle, the moment you're opening the door handle, the lion goes to the next village. 
The lion goes to the next city. Didn't the Bible say, a thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will never come near you. You got to believe God's word. You got to believe the goodness of God is working for you. you. You have to believe it. The goodness of God is on my side. The goodness of God is working for me. This is what makes you make impossible things possible. That belief, the goodness of God, you got to believe it so strongly. This is what happened to this woman. She, she believed it so strongly that she overruled all that negativity, all those impositions, all those restraints that were facing her, societal demands and laws that were stopping her from coming out. She ignored all of them because I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, even today. That's all she believed. That's all she believed. And that's what got her a miracle. That's what got her 12 years of suffering terminated. 12 years of financial bleeding terminated. 12 years of dignity bleeding terminated. 12 years of suffering terminated. So what, what obstacles are you allowing to keep you in your mind and stop you from reaching out to get the help that God has made available for you on the other side? You need to step out. You need to walk out of your comfort zone. You need to go out of that cocoon in your head and step out and say, I am here to get what I am. I, I have been apportioned by God. I am here to get what I have been, I have been given by God. You need, to, you need to step out and go for it. Stop allowing that thing in your head. It's only in your head. And the devil is using it to stop you. And guess what? As long as you continue to acknowledge it in your head, guess what? When you step out, you're going to see it outside. You're going to see it outside. And then the devil will say, you see, I told you, there's a lion in the street. I told you, there's, no, no, you need to change it. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And the more you say that to yourself and keep speaking it to yourself and lock your focus on it, that's all you're going to see. Do you know, this woman was weak and tired. She was weak and drained. But do you know, Strength came from somewhere. I don't know from where, but strength came from somewhere. And she got that miracle. A situation that has gone worse, the moment she touched Jesus, pam, it all disappeared. I know medical science may say it may take you how long to get well. That's not true. You can get an instant miracle. She got an instant miracle. Bam! Bible says she knew within herself that her situation has been turned around. What am I saying to you? You got to believe. Oh, yes. You got to believe the way has been made to your miracle. The highway to your miracle has been made by God. And you're going to walk in that highway because you believed it in your head. The, the, you're going to see in 2022, all those things that stopped me in, in previous years, they are gone. Jesus has taken care of them. Jesus has taken them out of the way. And you're going to step out and you're going to get your miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when, when I think about this woman, how come her growing, her worst growing situation, the Bible says she grew worse. How come that, you know, that she was getting worse did not deter her? You know, the, the idea that something is getting worse means that you're about to die. Your mind will play a game on you and say, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. But, you know, so if it's getting worse, then there's no point to seek help because it's, it's become terminal. There's no, there's no point to push. If, you, if she listened to that thought that it's getting worse, she would not have gone to look for help because our mind has a way of magnifying negativity. Our mind has a way of magnifying and amplifying negativity. She refused even though in the natural, pay attention, even though in the natural, the situation was getting worse. In the natural. But she refused to pay attention to it. She refused to acknowledge it and, and stay with it. Instead, she locked her mind. You say, but pastor, is that not, you know, um, um, lying to myself? No, no, no. You are standing on God's word. You are not lying to yourself. Is that, is that not... Um, um, you know, uh, living in denial. No, she was not living in denial. She was locking in her faith on the goodness of God. Don't, don't say you are living, you are not living in denial. You are locking in your faith on the goodness of God. For somebody who is carnal, you will say you are living in denial. 
But somebody who understands the things of God, you have locked your faith in the goodness of God. And the goodness of God will make you dare the impossible and you will get it. She got her healing. She got her breakthrough. She, 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 was, she, she was released from 12 years of suffering. You know, the Bible tells us something concerning this woman. When Jesus felt power leave him, Jesus began to ask the people around him, somebody touched me. His disciples were delirious. They, they were like incredulous. They said, uh -uh, how can you be saying someone touched you? People have been touching you. People have been touching you. Jesus said, I know what I'm talking about. Somebody touched me, for I felt power leave me. And then the Bible says, when the woman saw that she could not hide, because Jesus insisted, power left me. Power left me. And then the woman said, it's me. And the Bible said that she came and explained everything, and she told everything that happened. And then Jesus said, your faith, your faith has made you well. Can you see? It was her faith that beat the the, the impossible circumstances around her. Her faith. Her faith was what brought her her miracle. I'm saying to you, your faith is going to bring you your miracle. In 2022, your faith. So how do you sustain that faith that will not be contaminated by the, all the negativities and all the no's? Lock your mind on the goodness of God. Lock your mind. Meditate on it. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Lock your mind on that. And then watch what God is going to do. I said it yesterday. Let me say it again tonight. God is granting. God is granting impossibilities in 2022. Who will dare believe God? Who will dare reach out to God? God is granting impossibilities in 2022. And I see you testifying. I see you testifying. I'm done for tonight. Let me pray for you. Lord, I, I pray for my hearers and my listeners today. Whether they're watching this you know, um, um, broadcast on YouTube, on Facebook, or on the podcast, on WhatsApp, wherever they are listening to this message. Lord, whatever the difficulties and the challenges that has you know, um, um, hindered them in their minds in the years past from getting what it is that they're looking for, I pray now. Lord, that you will help them lock your faith on the possibility of a miracle, on the possibility of your goodness manifesting for them, because it is real. Lord, you said to us, in 2022, you are granting impossibilities. In 2022, you are granting impossible things that, that were impossible in the years behind that you are going to grant them in 2020. So we hold you to your word. We hold on to that Rema word. We hold on to that prophetic word. And I pray for everyone who is struggling to believe that their faith will lock in on that word and they will go past the negativities and the impossibilities and the difficulties and the obstacles that have stood in the way of their miracle. And they will get a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, because these testimonies start pouring in even now. In Jesus' name, amen. This teaching is available as a podcast. You can find it on, on Spotify, in, in, in Google Podcasts, in Breaker, in Pocket Cast, in Radio Public. These are all online platforms that host podcasts. And if you go there looking for, uh, search for Living the Life with Pastor Chucks, and then, you know, you will see Understanding the Goodness of God. Tonight is episode 188. And I have been sharing on this issue of overcoming impossibilities from episode 187, 186 two days ago. So 186, 187, 188 tonight. I'm going to continue next week uh, uh, because there's so much more that God will have me share, you know, in beating impossibilities. Hallelujah. But I, I, I want to congratulate you in advance. I want to congratulate you in advance. Your testimonies have come. The goodness of God has given you what was previously impossible. It has become possible. It has become a manifestation in your hands. It has become a testimony in your mouth in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. We continue with the amazing Power of Woman broadcast uh, tomorrow evening, 7 p.m. South African time. But until then, stay well. Keep your focus on Jesus. Keep your focus on the promise of God. Keep your focus on the possibility of the goodness of God overflowing towards you. Keep your focus on it and you will see 
the goodness of God manifest for you. Good night. God bless you. Bye-bye. There comes a time in your life when you need a change, an upgrade. You need upliftment. You need lasting results. You just want your life to be real. You need your life to be meaningful, deep, full, purposeful and easy. You're looking for enlargement, amplification, increase, strengthening. You're looking for growth in your life. You want leverage, strategic advantage, gain and favor, ability to influence, clout and strength. Join us at Resurrection Life Church every Sunday. Visit our website .reslife.org.za for more information. Make this year your year of being real. Embrace rapid enlargement and leverage. It is your time.